Hello, my name is Ken Getz. I'm a senior consultant with MCW Technologies. In this presentation, you'll learn how to add contacts and send email in Access 2007 using Outlook 2007. These are only a few of the many things you can do by automating Outlook from within Access, but you'll focus in this presentation on adding contacts and sending email. I've loaded the sample database, Automating Outlook, into Access 2007, and here you'll see we have a table of contacts with basic contact information stored here. In addition, we have a form, which allows you to edit or add new contacts. Now imagine you have this contact system configured in Access, but you'd like a way to be able to send email to a contact or add a contact to Outlook to match up with this contact you have in Access. I'll try sending an email to Andrew Fuller to start with. Now this is going to start up Outlook, and of course I have to choose the correct profile within Outlook. You don't have to show this dialog box, but it's a useful technique that you can. Outlook starts up and creates my email message for me. You can see that it fills in the two for me, and my code fills in the subject. I could fill in other fields as well. I could fill in the body. I could even send the email from within my access code. But this demonstration just creates the email message so you could, if you wanted, fill it in and send it, all from within your access application. I don't need to save this, so I'll put it away. I could also add a contact. Just as before, I click this button, Startup Outlook, and just as before, this creates a new contact, allowing you to fill in the details from within this Access application, which has automated Outlook. When you're done, you can save and close this designer so that now we've added a new contact in Outlook. Again, you don't have to make the user go through those steps. You could automate the entire process. There are methods you can call when you're automating Outlook to do all that work automatically. Let's look at the code and see how this is all happening. All the work occurs here in this module. Notice that this module has two variables set up as Outlook.Application and Outlook.Namespace. The only reason I can do that is because I've already used the Tools References dialog box to add a reference to the Microsoft Outlook 12 object library. I'm using Outlook 2007. If you're using some other version of Outlook, you'll check off the reference to that specific version of Outlook. You need to do that so you can use these early bound references. Also, once you set that reference, you can press F2 to bring up the object browser and use the Outlook reference information here within the object browser. It's immensely helpful to be able to do that. And you can only do that once you've set a reference. And, and the code won't work if you don't set a reference anyway. So the first thing we'll need to do anytime we work with Outlook is to initialize the Outlook application. Outlook will only allow one instance of itself in memory at a time. So you don't need to worry about starting up multiple copies of Outlook. What we'll do is call this init Outlook procedure every time we want to work with Outlook. We'll create a new instance of the Outlook application object. And now we need to get a reference to the mappy layer in Outlook. The way we do that is by calling get namespace, passing in mappy as a parameter. That makes you think there might be other namespaces you can work with in Outlook, but there are not. It's just mappy, and that's all there is. Given that namespace, we can use the log on method, which allows us to log into Outlook. There are various parameters you can specify, and if you look in the Outlook documentation, you'll find these. But the parameters I've specified display the Outlook profile dialog box. Once we've done that, we create a new session, and we're ready to interact with this Outlook application object. So we'll call this every time we want to do anything. See here, when we call add contact, we call init Outlook. When we want to send an email, we call init Outlook. If we want to send an email, we're passed in, for this sample anyway, the to, the person we want to send this email to. So the first thing we do after calling init Outlook is call the create item method of the Outlook application object, indicating what kind of item we want to create. We're creating a mail item. If you look up here in the code for add contact, you'll see that we call the create item method again, this time creating a contact item. But back down here in this code, 
All we need to do is specify the to property of that mail item, the subject property of that mail item, and then we'll call the display method of that mail item. If you just wanted to fill in the body and mail it, you could use mail item dot body and then fill that content in and then mail item dot send would send the email at that point without displaying it to you. But this code instead displays the mail item so you can do something with it. Now display is a modal method, which means it stops at that point and waits until you dismiss that item before going on. When we're done, we set the mail item equal to nothing to release the reference and call this cleanup procedure, which is right here. Cleanup just sets the public object references back to nothing so that Outlook can clean up after itself. When you click the Add Contact button, the form passes multiple bits of information to this Add Contact procedure. We call the Create Item method, given the type of item we want to create. We specify various properties of that contact item. And notice, by the way, that we're tacking on an empty string to everything. Why are we doing that? That's because everything passed to us is a variant, because it's coming from text boxes. Text boxes supply variants as their values. Now, because we're given a variant, it might be a null value. Maybe there's nothing in the text box. But these properties expect strings. The simplest way to convert a variant to a string, taking care of the null case, is to tack on an empty string. If this was a string, this doesn't do anything. If this was null, null and an empty string is now an empty string, and this will succeed. If you don't believe me, get rid of this, pass an empty value, and you'll see that you get a null reference error when you try. This is a simple way to solve that problem. We fill in various properties and then call the display method. Again, if you didn't want to see the item but just wanted to save it, you could call item.save and it would save the item directly into your contact list. Either way works fine. I find this to be a useful user interface for an application that allows users to interact with contacts or email within Outlook. Now there's a lot more to Outlook than you've seen here. If I bring up the object browser again, look at the Outlook type library, there are lots and lots of objects and things you can do with those objects. So if you're going to try to automate Outlook, you'll need to spend a little time investigating the object model of Outlook. That's well documented in the Outlook documentation. But this demonstration gives you a start showing how you can send email or create a contact from within your Access database.